Listen up, get ready, I'm not gonna take no more. There's a revolution, a revelation going on in my soul. Buckle up, get ready, we're not gonna sit back. Well, that was some Ella Jenkins music, and Ella Jenkins is somebody that everyone should know. Uh, she's a longtime Chicagoan, and she's a, a wonderful folk singer, uh, did a lot of work with kids. Uh, I saw her a few times. I saw her at a graduation where my wife was graduating from uh, school, and Ella performed. And then I saw Ella with Pete Seeger at the People's Church mm -hmm. in Uptown. And I'm really glad to say that we had Ella Jenkins on Live from the Heartland a few times at the Heartland Cafe back in the day. And um, we actually do have a recording and, you know, video recordings of those. And I think we will, uh, Lynn and I, who Lynn is coming on, she is our uh, pr music producer and a longtime associate of Ella Jenkins. And we're going to talk about Ella. And then we will play some of the videos that we have of Ella at the Heartland. So with all of that garble coming out of my mouth, I'm bringing on a wonderful friend, Lynn Orman, and she's got a picture of Ella right there by her, and Lynn is uh, set up to talk. So hello, Lynn. Good morning, Michael. Thank <laughs> you for uh, bringing back all the wonderful memories that we had at the lot, at the Heartland Cafe, my truly my favorite place to do interviews. We had a lot of good interviews on that show. And anyone who is uh, curious and is new to our show and doesn't know about it, if you go to youtube.com slash Heartland Media, there are hundreds of interviews and you could just type in Ella Jenkins' name and I think four or five of them come up. And um, uh, Ella's not the only person we had there. We had, uh, you know, people from the Jefferson Airplane and Starship. We had uh, plenty of uh, Muddy Waters kids there. We've had uh, a lot of uh, prominent musicians and politicians. Uh, you will have a good time. But in this case, look for Ella Jenkins at youtube.com slash Heartland Media. So, Lynn, uh, you and I have uh, talked about Ellen a little bit. And I, what I gleaned from our conversation is that you have actually been Ella's publicist for a long time. So I want to ask you, how did you meet Ella? What were your early impressions and what does it mean that you've been her publicist for over 30 years now that she's about to hit 100? Isn't that amazing? I started as her publicist at the same age that I am right now. So it's been uh, over 30, about 34 years that I've been her publicist. And when I got out of college, um, I started teaching at a head, as Head Start at a Head Start program in Evanston at Dawes School. And one of the artists that we used all the time was Ella Jenkins. And I would do these call and response songs with the kids in the program in the daycare. Little did I know that my life would go on this journey into the music industry and um I became very involved with the Grammys, as, as you know, with the Grammys back in uh, 19, early 1980s. And um, Linda Mensch happened to be her entertainment attorney. And Linda was a very good friend of mine. I've served on the uh, Grammy board and as vice president, Ella was president. And she said, Ella Jenkins is getting nominated for a Grammy and she needs a publicist. And I went, wait, Ella Jenkins, the one, the woman that I've been singing her songs, you know, when I was a preschool teacher, well, I had segued from early childhood education to being in the music industry. So it was just an absolute perfect fit for me. Somebody that I revered, um, a folk artist. I was always a folky, loved folk music. Um, and so I got to meet Ella and her lifelong, her manager and lifelong partner, Bernadelle, and we just became fast and furious partners, good friends. And I so, so enjoyed being her publicist in the early years, um, when, you know, she was the first time nominee for a Grammy 
which was wonderful. It was like one of the first women of color to be nominated for a Grammy. I think it was um, Bucky Hawker actually was on that album. Another uh, folky guy who's been on our show, wonderful guy with a lot of history and knowledge. Lynn, you were sharing with us a bit about how you became Ella's rep. And what I'd like to know is after you uh, became her publicist for uh, her Grammy presentation or her Grammy nomination, the first one, uh, I think it's more than one. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you then do as a publicist? So what, what was your what did you, what does a publicist do for a musician? Well, in, in terms of getting the information out there and Ella already being somewhat of a, of a star, a television star, because in 1956, she was on WTTW. She had her own television segment called This Is Rhythm on the Totem Club. Oh, and wow. after that, for from 1974 until 1992, I think my dates are pretty, pretty right. She was um, a special feature guest with Mr. Rogers on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, 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 you know, really crossing barriers, right, for a woman of color to make an impact in music, but also as, um, as an activist and having her voice heard. So that was pretty, that was pretty extraordinary. Um, so, and, and I think she had also uh, had a few episodes on the Barney, if you remember, if your kids remember watching Barney at all, but she was a, she was a favorite. And so it wasn't, um, for me, it was a total gift to be able to pitch her to the different networks, television for this new Grammy nomination that she got. And um, if I'm correct, I think it was a union of friends working together. So Earl, it was a lot of union songs. Well, she's quite a person. Why don't you tell us how she's doing today? And she is, uh, I guess she's retired from performing. Um, but you were, you saw her the other day and you have someone, uh, we're going to maybe play it somewhere in the show, a guy singing a song for Ella. Um, but uh, tell us a little bit how Ella's doing today. Well, she's turning 100. And as we know, you know, memory loss. When you reach that age, or any age, probably over. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yeah, right? But her talk about call and response, okay? If, if I, I will go there. I was there yesterday. And um, just for instance, we were we were reading this new storybook that she is, it is about her. It's called The Life of Song, Ella Jenkins. And it's wonderful. And there's a second book coming out on her too. It only took her a hundred years to get, you know, a children's storybook out on her. She's had other music books. This is Rhythm, one that she did with Peggy Lipschitz, who was our guest with her on that 90th celebration. Um but she, so we were talking about call and response, and she said, my, my favorite artist was Cab Calloway. And nobody could do call and response better than Cab Calloway. And she started singing Minnie the Moocher. She started singing all the words to Heidi, 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 oh. And then we did call and response back with her. So that really became her signature and still is today. And I honestly, I don't think there's anybody that can do it as, as well as Ella Jenkins. You know, she created um, Did You Feed My Cow, which I think might be in our, um, in our show, her 90th anniversary birthday uh, that we did. So um, Did You Feed My Cow, Who Fed the Chickens? I mean, that was really, really important to her to have this um, ability to work with to work with kids and have them respond in, in you know, um, Ravinia, by the way, she was one of the pioneers of children's programming at Ravinia for 40 years. And one of the significant things about that is she would bring and, and everywhere she performed. 
She would bring children up on stage. She'd bring uh, parents and teachers up on stage, and she would have them counting in different languages. She would have them singing in different languages. It was always about the children and having them learn something new, something, you know, a new culture. Well, we had her on uh, Live from the Heartland back in the, uh, when the Heartland Cafe was still standing. Um, and I think it was uh, probably around July 28th, 2014, we had her with Juan Diaz. And I don't know if Peggy Lipschitz was on that one or not. But yeah. uh, we're going to play uh, some of that interview because it's relevant and we'll hear this call and response. But before we do, Lynn, there is going to be a... Uh, a little bit of a celebration. A actually, Ella's birthday is August 6th. Right. And on August 4th, in Ella Jenkins Park at 333 West Wisconsin, where her church is located, Church of right. the Crosses. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that event. And is Ella going to be there? And is that a public event? What's going to happen? It is a public event and free to the public. We would love people to come out. There is a uh, a great little plaque, you know, a, a cement block. It says, you know, storyteller, Ella Jenkins Park with a really great plaque. It's where she went for years. She lived uh, right down the street on Mohawk Street. And um, from 12 to 2, there will be music, there'll be cake, and, um, and hopefully a sing-along, maybe some call and response. You know, we're just really... Everybody say a prayer that Ella will join us that day. We're doing a little private birthday party for her at her residence on that Saturday. And with fingers crossed that we're going to get a few special guests to come and visit her. I mean, you know, Ella, Ella, as you know, is coined as the first lady of children's music. And I have to say, when she received the Fifth Star Award in Chicago, that was like the big hero, Chicago Heroes Award, um, we had a little surprise for her. And the First Lady then, Michelle Obama, did a testimonial tribute and said, Ella Jenkins, I love you, and you were the First Lady before I ever was the First Lady. Well, that's a good one. Two well, great Chicagoans. This is really good. I'm glad you came on to help share this. Uh, you know, you've been really uh, a strong supporter of this show. It brought us a lot of great guests. And um, you brought Ella Jenkins to the heartland. And uh, we're going to play that. We're going to go out with that uh, until the very end when I'll come back and uh, say goodbye. So uh, our engineer, Hal. Time to let's play a little bit of Ella Jenkins on the video, which for you who are listening by radio can also hear what she has to say and the voices of some kids and other people singing along. So everybody listen up to Ella Jenkins and enjoy. We'll be back in a little bit. Used to hear it. Used to hear it. Yeah. What's your favorite song? No. Well, <laughs> one that many of the children, you know, before one, one of the songs I did right, you, you'll sing a song, but it, that Miss Mary Mac, and because it, it rhymes, it's it's easy and simple. Miss Mary Mac, all dressed in black, with silver buttons all down in her back. Would you like to sing that with one playing along with you? Well, you up for that? Uh, Miss, Miss, you get in the right key. Miss Mary Mac. Yeah, is that okay? Miss Mary Mac, 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 all dressed in black With silver buttons, buttons, all down her back We'll ask her mother, mother, for 15 cents To see the elephants jump the fence Well, they jump so high Touch the sky And they never came back Till the 4th of July Never, never came back Till the 4th of July Okay, now, uh, Lynn, would you put your camera down? 
And you come up here and do this. See if you can still. We're going to bring. She's young. <laughs> Lynn but Orman she may up. never know. Okay. She is our uh, one of our producers. And, we used to do and this. she does a great job of securing this great talent. Very mad. Sometimes we did it in dialect. One potato, two potato, three potato, four, 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 five potato, six potato, seven potato, more, more. Oh, oh. Get, get it, get it. <laughs> All right. So what's Ella, happening? Well, I'm going to do a little more of this interview now that I got you to sing. I was. Uh, I, w- I want to. I got a question. How old is Ella Jenkins? Oh, they say I was born 39. in 19, I was I was born in 1924. You figured it out. Ella Jenkins is as old as surrealism, as <laughs> when Andre Breton wrote it in the first Surrealist Manifesto. She's as old as Mercedes Benz, IBM, and MGM. She's as old as Caesar Salad, <laughs> and as old as the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade in New York City. She's as old as the Republic of Greece. All of these started in 1924. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> we like a guy who comes on the show and has done his research. Ella Jenkins. Well, I tell you, all you have to do with all the things you mentioned, just give me one of those, and I think I'll be. <laughs> so, Ella, these are some people who were born on the same year as you were. Earl, Earl Scruggs. Oh, so, yeah. No, Benny Hill. <laughs> okay. Sarah Vaughn. Oh, Sarah Vaughn, she's one. Marlon Brando. <laughs> Jimmy Roberts. Gee. Yeah. All the greats. Jimmy Roberts. <laughs> Henry Mancini. Wow. That's, that's Dennis crazy. Weaver, the actor from oh, Gunsmoke. Oh, yes. Yeah. Gunsmoke, and later uh, he rode a horse through New York Street yeah. on that show. Chet Atkins. Yeah, Chet Atkins was born in 1924. Oh, it, it, uh, Truman Capote. Really? Oh, my goodness. Uh, Jimmy Carter. <laughs> President Jimmy Carter. I have, you know, what you can do is give me a list of that. Give me that list. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Send them uh, birthday cards. No, no. I don't, <laughs> Lee I don't think, I think, I don't think some of them. Well, let's see. How many more you got there, bro? I have two more. Lee Iacocca. <laughs> and the last one is Consuelo Velasquez. No, Consuelo Velasquez is a Mexican songwriter who wrote the song Besame Mucho. Oh. Mucho, that's and song. when she I'll, I'll recorded that you, song, and, uh, uh, and you we can play together. Let's play that song. She let's wrote it I, when see. she was 15 years old. When you got Owen? She was 15 years old. She, she wrote the that song. The song means "Kiss Me a Lot," yeah. and by the time when she wrote it, she had never been kissed. Pobre, I'll say, I'll say. She was hoping, though. Well, I, well, to that, I'll say, pobrecita. Pobrecita. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get the same key.
didn't even rehearse beforehand. <laughs> I think we're going to have to. Yeah. Well, you know, I love uh, giving you questions to answer, but I think that what really <laughs> is the most popular thing that you do here, uh, whenever you've shown up, is, is doing some more singing. You got another song you want to uh, <clears throat> kick out the jazz well, on? Uh, I think some of the people may know the answer. This is one for the the children. If I said, if it said, did you feed my cow? What you say? Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Can you come in so you can help me teach them? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you, you, who's this big kid? <laughs> your name is Fo Elijah. Elijah. This oh, is Elijah. Wow. Let's have a big round of applause oh, for Elijah. Elijah. Elijah here. Yeah. Well, he, 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 I think he can. He can I think he can make his voice yeah. nice and loud, can't you? Mm -hmm. okay, the two of us are going to work, and you have to listen carefully so that, in case we do it again, then you can give the right response. Listen to his response. Did you feed my cow? Yes, ma'am. Could you tell me how? Yes, ma'am. What did you feed her? Corn and hay. What did you feed her? Corn and hay. Did you milk her good? Yes, ma'am. Did you milk her like you should? Yes, ma'am. How did you milk her shoes? <laughs> Swish, swish, swish. How did you milk her? Swish, swish, swish. <laughs> did my cow get sick? Yes, ma'am. Was she covered with tick? Yes, ma'am. How did she die? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. How did she die? Mm -mm. Did the buzzards come? Yes, ma'am. Did the buzzards come? Yes, ma'am. Well, how did they come? Show me. Flap, flap, flap. How did they come? Flap, flap, flap. <laughs> Didn't they do a good job? Okay. All right. Now. Now, without his voice, I'm going to see how much you remembered what he's, what he's taught you. Okay. It's your turn now. Did you feed my cow? Yes, ma'am. Good to tell me how. Yes, ma'am. What did you feed her? Corn and hay. What did you feed her? Corn and hay. Did you milk her good? Yes, ma'am. Did you milk her like you should? Yes, ma'am. How did you milk her? Switch, switch. How did you milk her? Switch, switch, switch. How did you milk her? Switch, switch, switch. Oh, give yourself a nice hand. <laughs> now, so do you know another song that I've done? Be anything that I... I like your singing song. Oh, your song. Oh, oh. oh gee. That, that was one of my favorite songs and one of the songs that's very popular. He said, you'll sing a song. Can we do it together and then, but then we'll teach them. You, okay, you sing a song and I'll sing your song. Then we'll sing a song together. You sing a song. I'll sing a song. In warm or wintry weather. <laughs> okay, let's try it, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, that uh, either audio or video, however you're getting the show of Ellen Jenkins at her 90th birthday. And um, I want to thank Lynn Orman for coming on and talk about Ellen. And I'm, Lynn, I'm going to give you another minute to talk about a couple of things that uh, we want to share and we didn't do at the outset of our interview. What do you got? Well, well there are two storybooks, as I said, that are going to be released. Or uh, one is out right now called A Life and Song and uh, another book that's coming out in November. But it really tells about her being um, a hidden gem in the civil rights movement and all of the artists, you know, that she kind of uh, that she brought on in 1956 on This Is Rhythm, Odetta and Big Bill Brunzi. She was really inspired by Big Bill Brunzi. That was one of her um, Uncle Flood's favorite artist that she met. So, you know, she was a young girl and she has paved the way as an African-American woman and a pioneer in the children's industry and folk music and as an activist. Well, everybody should uh, check out as much Ella as you can. And if you all haven't really listened to much Odetta, you should. I'm glad to say that my father, when he was out of work, did produce a concert with Odetta.